Hello students. So the next topic what we are going to talk about land and the uses of land. Page number twenty-five. They are saying the first paragraph. Generally, cities become bigger and lots of changes can be seen in them. Definitely, when there is development, technology, population is growing, demands are increasing, uh, luxuries uh, are there, all kinds of luxuries you can avail. So the whole skyline, whole uh, dynamics of the city changes, and the city looks very different. What uh, Pune was 50 years back, or for that matter, not even 50 years, 10 years back. Today, Pune has changed completely. Mumbai is not what it was 10 years back, five years back. So there are a lot of changes happening, probably every year nowadays. I would say if uh, nowadays things are changing so rapidly that even it's like sometimes it just brushes our eye and it passes away. So these changes also result in the change in skyline of the city. Now, land use. They've given this small activity and they've spoken about it. We'll first understand what basically does land use mean. That activity will help you to get an idea of what type of buildings and land use exist around the neighborhood. Now, every neighborhood has a different way of uh, having things around, like basic amenities. Uh, they have sometimes more of commercial uh, complexes. They have more so uh, beautiful uh, landscapes wherein recreational facilities are there. So every neighborhood is different from one. Today what you are in your uh, city, in one part of Pune city, the other part of Pune city is very different. So there is a, a lot of change. Like uh, for example, uh, if you see Koregao Park. Koregao Park is very different, lots of hotels and a lot of other things, nightlife and a different uh, way of living. If you look at Deccan for that matter or you look at Aunt for that matter, they have very different ways. So every neighborhood is different. You must have observed that the land around you is put to different uses. Now every land is put to different uses. There are various uh, reasons for putting them to uses and there are different ways of putting them to uses. Some land is occupied by rivers, some may have trees, some may have roads and buildings. Different types of lands are suited to different uses. Human beings thus use land as a resource for economic activity. Definitely whatever we have today or whatever we are going to do in future is related to our settlement in that particular area and the settlement mostly so in on land. It actually gives us the facility to have a smooth economic activity and to fulfill our needs or satisfy our needs. Production is happening as well as residences and recreation. Now land use. What is land use? It refers to the manner of utilization of land including its allocation, development and management. Manner of utilization of land. The way the land is used that particular area or that particular land in that particular area is used. Allocation, how is development happening? What kind of development is happening in that particular area on that land? How is that land being managed? Is it being managed or utilized or in the optimum way it is as it's supposed to be? In a commercial complex, having a residence doesn't make sense. It it actually does not uh, help you in living a proper, having a proper way of life. So land use also, this is one small, small example. People actually don't want to live in areas where there are commercial complex. It's a commercial complex and have a residential, uh, have a residence out there. Now, what are the objectives? To promote efficient utilization, acquisition and disposition of land, ensure the highest and best use of land. Using the land for the purpose it has been bought, for the purpose it serves, having said the facilities which are, are prevailing around, that kind of utilization needs to be done. To direct 
harmonize and influence discussions and activities of the private and public sectors related to the use and management of land serving the public and private sectors now all these activities which are carried on by the public and the private sectors and to have live in harmony to direct them and use those uh, lands effectively manage those lands effectively to reconcile land use conflicts and proposals between and among individuals private and government ent entities related to the present and future need for the land to promote desirable patterns of land use to prevent wasteful development the various patterns now to promote which kind of pattern which will be suited in that particular land so that there is no waste there is development happening and minimize the cost of public infrastructure now if that land is not used properly it has there's lot of waste there's no development proper development happening so it may cost uh, cost of public expenditure and public infrastructure and utilities and other social services so all these can have a cost to preserve areas of ecological aesthetic historical and cultural significance you all have seen that there is a land where they are beautiful probably they are the best trees uh, some uh, trees which are unique they should not be cut there are areas uh, of land where they have aesthetic value ecological is disturbing the ecology the biodiversity and the ecosystem historically you can't uh, actually uh, run down a fort and have something over there no it has historical value so you have to preserve these areas they are of historical importance cultural importance ecological importance and aesthetic importance aesthetic is something related to beauty now they have shown these there are different urban land use map color codes residential is yellow color code commercial is red industrial is purple institutional parks green greenery is there infrastructure is gray you have seen related to actually what you see what is the actual color of the that particular thing built up areas agriculture is again green like there's greenery again agro industrial forest mining grassland pastures swamp lands marshes cemeteries landfill idle lots etc so these are some color codes which are used for land use purposes which again we are, i will get back to this how they have said parks and open spaces is green the color scheme land use in my city and village that's what they are saying houses and apartments is dark red shops light blue public buildings offices school bus stations red we have the pmt bus stations which are running agriculture is yellow water bodies is dark blue transportation is black railways and highways so this is the color code what they have given this is also another way of using the map a color code map for land use now major land use categories where are these uh majorly used for what is the purpose of their usage built up land urban residential high density population medium density low density residential means where people stay live reside there can be high rise apartments flats you all can see in mumbai is a best example of high rise buildings they run down to how many floors even we don't know at times medium rise low rise apartments like bungalows or two floor low rise row houses low rise group houses slums and clusters are also residential people are staying having a living they have a home out there so slums is clustered so slums also comes into the residential area commercial commercial is retail and general business retail stores small uh, general shops what you all have the barber shop the general stores stationery shop uh, station, uh, stationery stores 
and uh, general business which is happening, you just want to buy some parts of your vehicle. So they are standalone shops. So that is commercial aspect. Nowadays, if you all see, you'll have huge societies, big societies wherein all is available because uh, these shops, standalone shops are there and they are small hotels, takeaways. So you don't need to get out of your uh, zone wherein all vegetable market, vegetables are also provided over there. So it's like a small area, small city of your own mother Kata city where everything is available. I mean, that area is very well known. Community center, wholesale and warehousing. Wholesalers are also there in particular areas. Now in Pune, there are some places where they do wholesale trading. As in if you go to Ravivar Pet, so uh, there's a lot of wholesaling done. Uh, it's like big businesses are done. Warehouses are there in some other particular areas. Major shopping centers and malls. Now malls, I don't need to say, you'll have the best of malls in Orbit, Phoenix, Seasons, Amenora, so these are malls. Shopping centers, shopping complexes in Deccan, there are um, the Hong Kong Lane on MG Road, if you'll see Clover Center, Cam, Kumar, uh, Kumar Corner, all that. Major hotels, the best of hotels. So commercial aspect, if you look, it's like doing business. You're earning money. May, parking area now in city, if you go to Tulsi Bar, there is a small section in one uh, corner where parking space is given and you have to pay for your parking. You'll have seen if you'll go to malls also, you'll pay for your parking. So over here when there's crowded places during the Ganpati and all, city is very crowded. So parking area also is kind of a revenue. So uh, it, it has a commercial aspect. Market yards, we know, we have a big market, Gultekri market yard. Exhibition hall. The best of halls which uh, give these uh, places for exhibitions, where exhibitions are held as uh, one exhibition, what I can think of, Dastakar. Dastakar exhibition is basically uh, where these uh, small uh, weavers are there from Andhra or from South and they display their creativity and it's directly from the, it's sourced directly from the person who makes it. Petrol bunks, banks. Banks are taken on rent, uh, these banks uh, lease these places on rent. So it has a commercial aspect. So commercially, you all can see it's much larger. So many things come. So the land use in commercial category is all this. All this comes under the commercial category or land use. Industrial service industry, tertiary sector, I said light industry, Extensive industry, heavy industries, iron and steel industry, hazardous industry, recreational is park, garden. We know famous parks and gardens around. Stadiums in Pune are there. Nehru Memorial, uh, I think on Sarasbagh it's some stadium. I have just forgotten about that. Playgrounds, BJ Medical Ground, there are other grounds in Texas. Gold Coast, Race Coast, we are aware of people who are sitting staying near uh, Fatima Nagar or that Sopan Bar, all that area, they know about race course, Puna Gulf course, it's next to Yeroda, Zoo, Cartridge Zoo, Botanical Garden, Empress Garden. So see these examples I've been giving you. For everything, whatever I can recollect as of now, I have been telling you. So these are the examples which you all can relate to. What I'm talking about, you all can relate to. Okay, this is a stadium, this is a playground. So for recreational facilities also, the land is used and is equally important. Historical monument fort, I have already told you about Sihangar fort. Uh, you all know about uh, Sihangar, I think, and uh, Shanivarwada fort, which is there in city, very well placed in city. Planetarium, major fountain hall, swimming pool, Shaji, uh, you all have some more famous swimming pools. Major cinema hall, theatres, this is something I don't need to tell you all. Young generation is moving quite a bit and they are very well aware of these places. Public and semi-public. Public and semi-public, what are comes into this category? Major education institute, cantonment area, cantonment. Major hospitals, big hospitals, known hospitals. We have Ruby, Jahangir, KEM, 
Dean Dayal, Dean Anand Mangeshkar, crematorium buried, I mean where someone is deceased or dead, is taken or cremated. So this is under the public and semi-public. So you can understand if the land is used for so many reasons. Now they are categorized, their purpose is very different. So why is it different? Why does it come into this category? You all know these reasons now why they come into this category. Grounds, social cultural centers, you have big big lawns which are available, religious places. Religious places we have uh, uh, famous uh, Davu Shiv temple and uh, it's known for its own reasons. Major government offices, Jilla Parishad, uh, petrol gas filling stations, all the petrol gas filling stations which are closer to your house, police station, every area has its own police station, fire station is there, circus their house, electric substation, uh, MSEB, jail, Yeroda jail is very famous. Water treatment plant, yes, there are some places where uh, these plants are available. Water treatment, landfill, dumping ground. Undri has the dumping ground where all the waste is taken over what I can recollect of. Electric power plant is there, sewage treatment plant. Now these treatment plants uh, have become very important, whether it's sewage or water treatment. Sewage is related to the Swachhata Abhyan. So it plays a very important role. Now you need huge grounds for these huge lands, acres of lands for uh, sewage and dumping because there's a whole process which goes for it. So the uh, square kilometer, the area of land also depends on the purpose. I mean, if you have a small area, you can't have a uh, dumping ground for that. You need a huge area because trucks come and unload. There's so much waste and wastage which is carried forward to these particular places. Then there is rural built-up. Now rural built-up, this is what we spoke about is the urban built-up. Now rural built-up, there are huts and hamlets. Hamlets are those small, I told you, it's less than a village. Multi-story buildings now, the uh, whole structure of the rural villages is also changing. They have also moved on to development through, because of social media, awareness, knowledge, education. So go down, there are big go downs because there are quite a few um, factories, small industries which are there in rural areas. Community halls, they have their own community halls. Cultural complex and temples, now temples as in where you go for these small uh, Ashtavinayak temple you have. Then uh, there are a lot of temples which we can think of which, are, which come under the rural uh, built up. Library schools, now they also have their own library. They have started to promote uh, small, uh, they have small libraries and there's a particular village which I can't recollect right now, but there is a particular village wherein these students compulsory in that village or in that school have to have books to carry every day so that they build up on their reading. Now they've got to know the importance of reading. Schools also rural uh, schools are there in rural areas. Rural agriculture, most important thing for our country, India is an agricultural country. So crop lands, imagine the acres of lands which uh, are there for crop and vegetable production, fallow land, fallow land, plantation. Now, there are lots of forests which we know of vegetation, forests and other dense forests is there when it's densely populated, lot of trees, open forests, plantations, mangroves. So land is used, I mean these lands are being occupied. Now you will say that there are no human beings out here. Yes, of course the land is occupied as it is said by trees or by rivers or by, by humans, but it has been occupied for a purpose. Understand that that these, there is a purpose behind every land being occupied. And if there are forests, now suppose as we read that the ecological aspect also has to be looked into. So these forest areas, they have ecological value. They help the biodiversity. They help our ecosystem. So I mean, if you cut down on these forests and you build up something, you are disturbing. So the land use 
has a lot of relevance in today's times because as it is we are depleting we are actually harming mother earth and the land is abused the most so where these forests are there water bodies probably are there you can't change the whole scenario it's not um, it's not the right thing to do so these lands are very important grazing land you have seen in villages where these sheep are taken over for grazing sheep goats cows are going so that also land is there where they need that freedom they are by themselves transportation and communication bus terminus now you have seen bus depots where bus are standing buses are standing flower gate very important pool gate in deccan also there are a lot of uh, bus terminus so now they need a land wherein a lot of buses can stand at one time because there's a population which comes which goes in and out of the depots railway station you all i don't need to explain you all know airport airport is huge i mean the business is huge the running is huge the landing so it's very different sea port harbor bridges bridges also is kind of land is being used bridges are constructed flyovers you are seeing a lot of flyovers nowadays because of lot of community uh, transportation problems roads railway lines now this is the basic this is the basis of our existence these we need them truck terminals jetties breakwaters breakwaters and post offices gpo post office is also very famous indian post office which is a very old one in city so they have their own importance they need space telephone exchange bsnl we are very well aware of telegraph office radio tv stations there are so many fm stations which have come up tv stations uh, ftii you all know next uh, in deccan in next is in voices so that is very famous so it is large acres of land water bodies also take into the land of land area they work in canals lakes ponds reservoirs tanks cooling ponds abandoned quarries with water wastelands these are different lands their major uses salt affected gullied ravine land with or without scrub barren or rocky land there are some barren lands just kept they may be utilized or used later rocky lands are also important because they may not be used now they may be used later sandy lands now wetlands also have their own relevance marshy and swampy lands mud flats water logged salt banks open spaces and others now quarry is there brick kilns are there where brick is uh, bricks are made dam and barrage coral reef reclaimed land is there vacant land empty land so all kinds of lands we have spoken about so you can understand now you all got to know that the land use is for so many purposes some of them we weren't even aware of because we didn't know they come into this category every land has been used for a purpose so the purpose needs to be right the action needs to be taken on time and utilized to the optimum or else is a land the use of land is of no purpose land is a finite resource while one land is used for a limited range of purposes the other land can accommodate many potentially competing uses now every land can be used for one purpose or many purposes so one can be used for limited range of purpose the other can be can accommodate many potentially competing uses it depends from land to land and the purpose and the place where it is located the land where it is located the amount of land used for each purpose are constantly changing yes today it's used for something tomorrow it may not work it may be used for something else 
the nature and extent of these changes are very important for planning. Establishment of new housing on a previously developed land is a major area of concern in most of the cities. Now, this also is a cause of concern because the establishment of new housing on a previously developed land is a major area. Nowadays, there are many, um, I would say, drawbacks associated with this kind of uh, construction or this kind of housing. Town planning, if it's not planned, you are seeing what happens, what is the repercussion of this. If it's done in a haphazard way, today we only are suffering as citizens. So town planning, land use planning, how is the land going to be used? It has to be put on paper first, planned nicely, and then put into that taken into action in that manner the way it has been written on paper. And urban design are problem solving profession. Now there are many people who are um, at the forefront who have knowledge about urbanization, planning of urban cities and rural cities and how it's going to happen. So these, these are problem solving professions. They help the government wherein town planning is concerned and suppose a particular area it has to be developed in what manner it has to be developed the problem now in today's times is what is there on paper and what actually is done is very different so there is uh, there is no synchronization between the two they address the social physical and economic well-being of cities and towns now they basically they solve the purpose of these three things social aspect, the physical aspect, and economic well-being of cities and towns. Development studies involve proper utilization of the land resources. Now, what happens is, when you're developing a land, a particular land, if it's done in a proper way, the planning has been done in a proper manner. Firstly, the manner in which the planning is done it has to be done to those people who have knowledge of these things. They have to come in contact with the government. The government has to take action on the basis of these experts. And then it has to be put in. It, if it's done for the own selfish reasons, and if it's done in a haphazard way, the citizens suffer. So the proper utilization of these land resources is a must. If they are not utilized in a proper way, that whole land goes for a waste, wherein nor is the government satisfied what is the purpose, and as people, we aren't satisfied where we are in that particular place or that land being used. We are not satisfied. So basically, development studies involve proper utilization of land resources. All the resources have to be utilized properly. Now, this is basically some information about land use, how we have to look at land use. We have spoken about a lot of other aspects of uses of major land uses. Where, in which areas do you categorize them and what is their purpose? Why are they used? Now, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about land use classification. Land use classification also, before coming to land use classification, I would want to tell you all that if you all know that what is the purpose of land, why is the land used, which areas it is used, and what are the reasons for us to know that why this land needs to be used, then you this uh, topic makes sense. This is a uh, very knowledge-based topic which is going to be uh, you all can become future architectures you all can become you all are going to go into profession which could be related to land so you all need to have knowledge of what all these basic concepts of land say and how do they have uh, relevance in our life or in our future life later so you will have seen that land basically has you can't just have a residence and you do nothing with it. Your neighborhood is completely dry and empty. So you would like to have a land where you would like to have stay on a land where I am residing. I have some recreation. 
it has some economic viability it is good for my social life for my physical mental health so these all aspects also play a very very important role in what purpose does the land serve to us at an individual level at a group level collective level at a lower level or at a higher level so the purpose of land needs to be understood in such a way wherein we start thinking of it on an individual level and we progress it towards the higher level i mean where you have to think from the economic activity uh, part of it the economic way the physical the social aspect economic and revenue way also i mean from the government side how particular lands are useful some uh, some are revenue earning for the government some uh, uses of land the lands which has been used are from the revenue aspect if you see some we think of as from our point of view so this small topic of land use except the small detail wherein what land use majorly talks about what is it saying about uh, the uses the aspects we have seen next we will go through land use classification